So a game being fun is the exact same reason why the games even exist in the first place. I mean, if you can't make a game fun, then you got something wrong with you. But the thing is, if you can make a video game successfully and fun, then that really makes it, you know, fun to play, worth your time, whatever anyone likes to consider video game addiction to be. And whatever your definition of video game addiction is, there are three factual statements. I literally just said that two seconds ago. So, a game being fun is why we play games. I mean, heck, I play games a lot during the weekend, whenever I don't have school to deal with. It's something that I like to do to pass the time. Then you have the other two, which are satisfaction and disorder. But it being fun does lead to the main addiction, which is kind of the starting point. If the game is fun, then the player will want to come back. Meaning that they want to play the game over and over and over and over and over and over again. The game being that fun, you're going to have to have some kind of thing to go along with it. And it being fun will cause the player to come back. Like I just said earlier. God! Okay, anyways, if, you, if you're like me, and if you play older games, and they don't really have a story, they have story, but the story just freaking ends right when you beat the game. That is what, that is where the next part of the video game addiction comes in. That part is, my friend, Satisfaction. But I won't get into that just yet because I am such an idiot. I don't know how to take videos the proper way. And I just want you to keep you hanging. So you're going to have to watch more of this. It's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun. Like how games are supposed to be to make them addicting. Which is the main point of a game. If it's not fun, then why play it? It's, and video games have become such a common media nowadays. Like, you have game reviewers. You have people who play games for a living. You got everyone who does that, who does that kind of stuff. And I'm not against those people at all. Like, one of my favorite YouTubers is a game reviewer. And another one of them is a, is a Let's Player, so... I am not against them, but if you have something that big making another subgenre, then that makes your media even bigger, which spreads it out to everyone so that they can have fun with their product. So that is, my friend, how a game being fun can lead to video game addiction. Now, next video, I will be talking about satisfaction the satisfaction part of video game addiction. So, stick around if you want to, which I don't think many people do, but maybe. Just, just maybe. So if you want to watch it, you can stick around until tomorrow if you'd like. That's when I'll, that's when I'll be shooting the video, so stay tuned. And have a great day. So in the previous video, I said that the games do it for you. Well, that was just something to say from your boy Jacob. I didn't really mean that. I wanted to give a little statement. And it didn't really work out. So today I'm going to tell you why video games are addicting. Woohoo! So basically... The three different side effects or reasons why video games are addicting in the first place are fun.
and you guess the other two? Satisfaction. And last but not least, the disorder itself. Now, not really, it's not really a disorder that it's really well known. It's, video game addiction is more of a disorder itself, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But, anyways, let's dive into what makes our favorite pastime fun and addicting. We'll see you there. But just as an example, let's fast forward back to 1998 to Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now, this game has varied gameplay styles and very fun mechanics. And it basically shaped gaming to how it is today. But the only downside about this is once you defeat Ganon, then you can't really do a lot more in the game. There's not really any more story exposition besides you restarting the game and hope you don't die in the main story, which I think is really easy to do, mind you. But anyway... This is very apparent in action-adventure games like Ocarina of Time, where they don't have any extra content to provide after you beat the game, which can be quite a bit of a problem. But that is okay. But in modern games, what they basically did was they added a thing called DLC, which I'm sure you guys are aware about. It's basically more content, so the player would keep on coming back to play some more. And that is what shapes gaming now. Now I know what you're probably thinking to yourself. You kind of got straight off topic. Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to get into is the next topic, which is satisfaction. This is another layer to the video game addiction definition. This basically means that there's not really anything about it being fun other than it being satisfying. Now, it being satisfying and it being fun are two different things. It being fun is where you actually enjoy the thing, but the satisfaction is the is the enjoyment you get out of that you get from fun which are two different things satisfaction and fun we never thought i said that right um but ocarina of time my point was that if you beat ganon then there's not a lot to do. If you did all the side quests, then there's not a lot to do. But in games, but in like multiplayer games and games that have downloadable content, it makes the experience a lot more expansive and unique. But with all of those in mind, satisfaction is kind of a mouthful when you think about it because it has many different kinds of categories, especially um, games like Animal Crossing and Harvest Moon 64, where you got many different surprises that your virtual town has up its sleeve. So that basically makes both of those games, one that makes the player come back for more. Which is exactly what satisfaction comes from, is from the player enjoying the game. There is one more kind of side effect, which is what I consider these, by the way, if you didn't already know that. There's one more kind of side effect that proves video game addiction, and that is... Not disorders, I know I said that last time, but it's actually dopamine. Didn't think you see, saw that coming. That disorders um was actually a mispronunciation. It was actually dopamine. So yay, have have fun. Now, if you're not really sure on what dopamine is, dopamine is a chemical in your brain that 
produces that's actually active when you get when you do a satisfying thing or when you hear something satisfying if you see something satisfying if it has to do with satisfaction then dopamine is active it basically makes you more right likely to do those activities again which base which is what video games are like so i'll get and i'll get more in depth in that in just a second have you ever played Mario 64 whenever you were a kid and you just mess around with this Mario face for about maybe half an hour to about an hour? Well, that was because it was satisfying. It's not because the game wanted you to. It wasn't a story thing that the game intended you to do. It was a thing that you wanted yourself to do. Which is what the game developers were intending, by the way, for the game to be satisfying. And that is really good design. But that also makes the game addicting. And that released dopamine, which you wanted, since you want, that Mario face was so addicting to you as a child, you wanted to keep on playing around with it for hours and hours. This meant that you had dopamine that was inside of your brain that was actually active at that time, which is one of the main effects of video game addiction. But with all of that in mind, that's really it. Like, there's a lot more smaller things that are apparent when you see video game addiction definitions in the, like, on websites or something like that. But those are the three main things that make video games addicting. And that is what the developers were hoping for, that you would get hooked into their game. Next time on Jacob Plays... I will be doing a retrospective on The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. See you guys then.